In this video, we're stuffing lasagna into a spaghetti squash. Let's get cooking. On its own, spaghetti squashes are bland and boring, but by using them to make different pasta dishes, you get all the flavor of a pasta dinner without all the guilt. I wanted to see if this also applies to lasagna. So let's start by roasting our squash. Slice off the top and bottom ends. This is gonna give us a sturdy base to stand our squash upright. It might be a bit of a fight, but with a sharp knife, cut it right down the middle. Alternatively, you can lay it down and try cutting it, but I find you get more less leverage this way. Once you've got this opened up, scoop out the seeds with a large spoon. If you've ever made pumpkin seeds, you can hang on to these and follow the same recipe. I'm just joking. I don't think you can even do that, and if you could, I imagine it doesn't taste that great. Someone give it a try and let me know in the comments down below. Once cleaned out, place on a parchment lined baking sheet and top with one teaspoon neutral oil, some kosher salt, and a generous cracking of black pepper. Flip them cut side down and place in a 400 degree oven to roast for 40 minutes. While that's roasting, let's switch our focus to our filling. We're gonna make a meat sauce, and for that, we're gonna need to start with a great marinara. But first, we gotta prep all our ingredients. Start with five cloves of garlic, peeling and cutting into slivers. Don't worry too much about getting these thin since they'll overcook and burn too quickly in our pan. Try to cut them into nice, even slices. Next, we'll grate about 60 grams of mozzarella cheese. This cheese looks a little bit crumbly because I'm using pizza mozzarella. It's all I had in the fridge, but any mozz works for me. Last, we need to open a 28 ounce can of San Marzano tomatoes and dump them into a bowl. We're gonna hand squish these so an apron always comes in handy. Once they're nice and chunky, our prep is done and it's time to cook. Place a high walled frying pan over medium high heat and heat one teaspoon of oil. We're using a frying pan because it helps cook out the water from the tomatoes faster and breaks down the sauce much more quickly than a stock pot would. Once hot, add in our extra lean ground beef, season with some kosher salt and fresh ground pepper and spread it out across our pan. This is gonna help get some browning on our meat and browning is flavor. After four-ish minutes, flip the meat and begin breaking up, cooking through until it's no longer pink. This beef either had more water or more fat content that I'm used to working with. It didn't brown up as nicely as I'd like. No big deal. Just keep cooking it until it's cooked all the way through. Once that's done, we're gonna remove it from the pan and set it aside. With the same pan, we're gonna make our marinara. Heat another teaspoon of oil and add in our garlic. Let this cook moving constantly until shimmering. No browning. We don't want this to get any color, just to release its delicious oils. About 20 to 30 seconds of constantly moving it should do the trick. Add in our crushed tomatoes, a quarter cup of water that I swished around in the can to get some extra tomato flavor, season with salt and pepper, and bring to a boil. Once that's bubbling, turn it down to a simmer and top with one whole sprig of basil. Don't stir in the basil until the basil leaves begin to weld. This is gonna help it release its flavor a little bit better. A trick I learned from the king himself, Mark Bittman. Allow your sauce to simmer without disturbing it too much. Once it starts to thicken up, about 15 minutes or so, remove the basil leaves and add your beef back into the pan. Stir everything together until it's well combined and let all the flavors come together on a simmer for another five minutes. Remove your pan from the heat and it's time to check on our squash eye. Remove your pan from the oven, flip your squash and allow them to cool until cool enough to handle. Using a fork, scrape out the insides forming strands of delicious veggie goodness. I'm sure there's a technique to this, but I'm not really too focused on getting longer or shorter strands, just trying to scrape out as much as I can here. Then we're gonna take all of those scraped insides and add it directly into our meat sauce. This is really gonna thicken up and you might wanna use a bowl for this part, but that's not how we do it here. Next, we'll add in half a cup of light ricotta cheese. Ricotta is what separates a lasagna from any other pasta dish. It's often referred to as whey cheese because it's made with the byproduct whey from making cheese. Fun fact for you. Combine everything together and taste for seasoning. Season it with salt until it tastes the way you like. And then we're gonna stuff this back into the squash shells. You're probably gonna have to overfill these a little bit and you're still gonna have some left over. Not a big deal. Honestly, this step is optional, but highly recommended. You can always just eat the filling. Top each half with two tablespoons of ricotta, 30 grams each of our shredded mozzarella, and place back into a 400 degree oven for 10 minutes or until the cheese is melted and golden brown. Remove these from the oven, allow them to cool for a few minutes, and then top them with some freshly sliced basil. This made an amazing dinner, and at 800 calories per one half, how can you go wrong? I ate a whole one and was absolutely stuffed. You couldn't eat that big of a piece of lasagna even if you wanted to. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any recipe suggestions, also put them down there. If you want to see more videos like this and you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. And until next time, get cooking.